This is module 4.2, Compressed Gas Cylinders. This section will focus on understanding the hazards and proper procedures for routine handling of compressed gas cylinders on Sable Island. When working with compressed gases, the proper protective equipment must be worn. For moving cylinders, safety footwear should be worn. For handling cylinders, gloves should be worn and during use of compressed gas cylinders, safety eyewear should be worn. Gas cylinders are heavy. A cylinder typically weighs 180 pounds. The tall and narrow cylinder is not stable unless it's restrained. They can easily be knocked over and if it falls over on you, it will hurt you. A helium cylinder that's knocked over and damaged can release all of its contents in a split second making the cylinder rocket through the air or spin at high speed or even shoot through the wall and kill or maim anyone nearby. If a hydrogen cylinder is knocked over and the valve is damaged, the contents of the tank can rush out creating a static charge and self-igniting and then the flaming cylinder can rocket through the air, spin at high speed or shoot through the wall. The first step to ensuring the safety of compressed gas cylinders is to ensure that cylinders are properly secured in a safe position and the valves are protected from accidental damage. Cylinders must be stored upright with a retaining strap to prevent them from being knocked over. Cylinder caps should be left in place on the cylinder until the cylinder is secured and ready for use. Cylinders should only be moved with a proper handcart and not dragged or rolled. Trying to move cylinders just by hand has a high risk that they'll fall, so don't do it. Inspect the handcart before use to ensure everything is in order. Wheels, chain restraint, handle. The cylinder cap must be in place when moving cylinders and the cylinder must be secured to the cart with the attached chain. When Sable Island has both hydrogen and helium cylinders on site, they're normally segregated on different sides of the doorway, but depending upon the number of cylinders, they may all be on one side of the doorway. Before using a cylinder, double check the label to ensure it's the gas you think it is. It might have been segregated improperly when it was delivered and you must check to be sure. Do not rely on the cylinder color to determine the gas it contains. Look for and read the label. If the cylinder label is missing, do not use the cylinder. Before using a cylinder, inspect it to ensure all is in order. Remove the cylinder cap. Check that the cylinder valve handle is securely mounted. Inspect the valve assembly to ensure it's not bent, broken or damaged. If there is any visible damage, mark the cylinder do not use, note the problem in the log and advise the OIC. Inspect the threaded connection port to ensure there are no visible defects with the threads. Ensure the connection port is clear of dust, debris and insects. Do not open the cylinder valve to blow the connection port clear of dust or dirt. With any gas, that sudden burst of pressure can blow debris with high speed. But with hydrogen gas, that sudden pressure release could be sufficient to ignite the gas. To control the flow of gas from a high pressure cylinder, a regulator is used. Regulators have a threaded fitting to connect to the cylinder. The regulator has two pressure gauges. One shows the pressure in the cylinder and one shows the delivery pressure. The regulator valve adjusts the delivery pressure and the flow rate of the gas. When the valve is fully counterclockwise, the internal spring is relaxed and there is no flow through the regulator. As the regulator valve is turned clockwise, the internal spring is compressed, allowing gas to flow. Before using a regulator, check it for damage. Check the snub end. Look for dents, gouges, scratches and anything that might affect a proper fit in the cylinder. Check the threaded connector, looking for damaged threads. Connect the regulator to the cylinder. For helium cylinders, the threaded connector has the normal right hand thread. Hand tighten the fitting, then use the provided regulator wrench to tighten further. Do not use an adjustable wrench. Do not use Teflon tape on the cylinder connections and do not over tighten. Turn the regulator valve fully counterclockwise. The valve will spin freely indicating there is no back pressure on the valve. Slowly open the cylinder valve about one half turn. 
Note the reading on the cylinder pressure gauge. Apply LeakTech fluid to the connection fitting and confirm there are no leaks. To start the gas flowing out of the regulator, slowly turn the regulator valve clockwise. You'll feel the regulator valve get stiffer as it compresses the internal spring and then the gas will start to flow. The hydrogen regulator is very similar to the helium regulator but has an opposite thread to ensure the regulators aren't used on the wrong cylinders. The hydrogen regulator also includes one more valve, the flow control valve, used to control the flow of gas into the balloon. In normal operation, the hydrogen regulator valve would be adjusted until the delivery pressure was 10 psi. Problems If you can't open the cylinder valve by hand, do not use a wrench or other tool to turn the valve. Mark the cylinder do not use and advise the OIC. If you can open the cylinder valve but have a leak at the regulator connection that isn't solved by simple tightening the connector, do not over tighten the connector. Mark the cylinder do not use and advise the OIC. When using the electrolyzer storage tank, the inflation control valve is on the other side of the wall. When using helium cylinders, you can use them wherever they're stored. But when using hydrogen cylinders in the inflation room with their additional fire hazard, you want to control the gas while standing in the doorway and able to exit if a problem develops. So for hydrogen cylinders, the cylinder you're going to use must be moved to the location immediately beside the inflation room door, so you can easily reach the valve from the doorway. This enables you to stand at the doorway, safely control the inflation, and quickly turn off the gas flow if any problems develop. We've completed the fundamentals of cylinder safety and the operation of the gas regulators. Now we'll go through the use of this equipment step by step from beginning to end, repeating what we've already learned and also adding additional safety details at each step. First, remove the cap. The helium cylinder illustrated has its valve wrapped in plastic, which must be removed before use. Inspect the valve assembly to ensure it's not bent, broken or damaged. If there is any visible damage, put a do not use tag on the cylinder and advise the OIC. Inspect the connection port to ensure it's clear of debris, insects and dust. Do not open the cylinder valve to blow the connection port clear of dust or dirt. With any gas, that burst of pressure can blow debris with high speed. But with hydrogen gas, that sudden pressure release could be sufficient to ignite the gas. Get the appropriate regulator for helium or hydrogen. They're both labeled. Check the regulator's snub end and threads to ensure they aren't damaged. Use the proper regulator wrench provided. Do not use an adjustable wrench. Ensure the regulator valve is fully counterclockwise. The hydrogen regulator has a separate flow control valve, so ensure the flow control valve is closed fully clockwise. Do not stand in front of the regulator gauge or the cylinder valve outlet when opening the cylinder valve. Slowly open the cylinder valve. One half turn is enough. If you can't open the valve by hand, do not use a wrench, hammer or other tool. Mark the cylinder as do not use and advise the OIC and get another cylinder in its place. Note the cylinder pressure. A full cylinder is typically about 2200 PSI. A balloon typically requires around 500 psi. Apply the snoop or leak tech fluid to the cylinder connection to confirm there are no leaks. If any bubbles form, it indicates a leak. Tighten the fitting a little more, but do not get overexcited and try to overpower the fitting. Over tightening can damage the regulator or cylinder valve. If you can't stop the leak, close the cylinder valve, mark the cylinder do not use and advise the OIC, and then move to another cylinder. With no leaks on the regulator, you can begin the inflation. For this hydrogen regulator, you'll turn the regulator valve clockwise until the outlet pressure is 10 psi, and then use the inflation flow control valve to fill the balloon. If you were using a helium regulator, you just turn the regulator valve clockwise until gas starts to flow. While the balloon inflation is underway, stay close to the inflation control valve. Don't do anything else except watch the balloon. When the inflation is complete, 
close the flow control valve fully clockwise. Turn the regulator valve fully counterclockwise until it's loose. Close the cylinder valve. Now, with the main cylinder valve closed, we want to bleed off the internal pressure from the regulator. Turn the regulator valve clockwise until the small amount of gas exits the regulator, then restore the valve to its fully counterclockwise position. Remove the regulator, put the cap back on, and if necessary, move the cylinder back to its storage location. Empty cylinders must be tagged and moved to the marked storage area. This completes compressed gas cylinders.